A year ago, I made predictions about what we'd see in 2022, and 100% of them came true. You want to know what I see coming in 2023? Stick around. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm sharing my predictions for what I see coming down the road in 2023. A year ago today, I made a video very similar to this, which was my predictions for 2022, and unfortunately, I think 100% of the stuff that I was talking about in there actually ended up happening, which kind of surprised me, and that might kind of sound a little bit weird. Why would I be surprised that something I predicted ended up happening? Uh, well, the way I see predictions, they're not predictions, predictions out of a crystal ball. Uh, as a prepper, you know, I'm a prepper, not a prophet. You know, prophets see the future and know exactly what's going to happen. Preppers, although here on YouTube, a lot of preppers seem to act like they, they know exactly what's going to happen. But, you know, really what you're doing when you're a prepper is you look into the future, future and you think about things that are possible or likely and you prepare for those things. Here's an example. Uh, tonight, before I go to bed, I'm going to lock the doors to my house. Uh, that's not because I absolutely know someone's going to try to break into my house tonight. It's just something that's possible. So you, you know, take actions, uh, you know, against that possibility. Um, so I was a little bit surprised <laughs> and um, disheartened and disappointed that, you know, uh, I think all the predictions that I made, uh, you know, back at the end of last year ended up happening. I hope that I'm not as accurate this year because I see 2023 as being even rougher than the past year has been. And this has been a pretty rough year for a lot of people. A lot of people have lost their lives over the past year. A lot of people have lost their uh, livelihoods and their lifestyles over the past year. It's been really difficult for people. And I think 2023 is going to be even worse. I hope that I'm wrong about it but I don't think that I am. So before I talk about what I think is gonna be happening in 2023, what I wanna talk about is what we should do about it because that's really the important thing. It's not necessarily important to know what's happening. What's important to know is what to do about it. So what am I gonna be doing about it? Well, I'm gonna be doing the same types of things that I've been doing up until this point, which is if there are assets and things that I know that I need, or know that I want, I'm gonna start acquiring those things now. I've already done a lot of that. I'm, you know, I'm a prepper, I've already got the pantry together, but I'm gonna continue down that road of just thinking about things that I might need or want over the next year, or even further down the road than that, and acquire them now. Because if there's anything that I know with 100% certainty, it is that the ability to, get, uh, to acquire things right now, even though it might not be as easy as it was you know, five or 10 years ago, it's, I think, almost with 100% certainty, easier today than it's gonna be over the next year or the next two years. So it really makes sense to you know, gather a lot of these things now. The types of things we're talking about are things that you need, things that you want, you know, food, medicine, those are critical things you need, water, the ability to uh, uh, keep yourself uh, kind of uh, sheltered and secure in a home. There are a lot of people right now in the winter that are having trouble uh, you know, just keeping their house warm enough because they made no, made no plans for the idea that, you know, grids might go down. If there is anything that you are reliant upon the functionality of the world around you in order to supply you, get it while the world is functioning. Because I think over the next year, we're all going to be surprised, myself included, uh, you know, because I talk about these things on this channel, but seeing it actually happen, still, it feels a little bit surprising when you actually see it happen. Um, I think we're all going to be kind of surprised about how quickly things can fall apart. Okay, so those are the things you should do. Things you need, things you want, get them now. Simple enough. Prepping's simple. Prepping's really simple. What do I see coming down the road over the next year? Well, I, wa I wanna talk about this uh, in kind of like uh, two major uh, kind of uh, uh, facets. And they both kind of stem out of the, the same facet. Um, the first one, which is kind of like the bedrock of everything, is the ability of our world and our society to support all the people here uh, is going to start really, really diminishing uh, for two reasons. One, there are more people than there ever have been before. Uh, we just passed uh, 9 billion people over the past year. And how did we get to that point? Well, we got to that point by uh, using technologies that allowed us to take energy, in this case, uh, you know, cheap energy that we were able to cheaply source, easily source, and we were able to turn that energy into things like fertilizer that were uh, 
able to create what we called the Green Revolution. And the Green Revolution was great in a lot of ways. It created food, uh, you know, and it gave the ability for people to try to uh, diminish starvation here in the world. But instead of using it for that, what we ended up doing is, well, we, we kind of did what the, the U.S. federal government does. If you give them more taxes, they, they find more ways of spending that money. <laughs> I, uh, my, my, uh, my boy right now is uh, studying, like, uh, the early... Uh, early 20th century, uh, you know, United States history. And it was kind of, uh, uh, you know, back then when the federal government de decided that they needed to create an income tax uh, from, uh, because there was a deficit and, uh, you know, they needed, uh, you know, different ways of getting in revenue so that they, you know, wouldn't go into the, wouldn't go into the red. Uh, well, the deficit back then was like, this and then they started you know pumping more tax dollars in to you know to pay that off so that we could you know keep our books in the black and when they got extra money they just found more ways of spending that money and now our deficit is like that so you know as with most people we all have a spending problem not an income problem uh, when our income goes up our spending goes up when our food availability goes up we just grow and multiply and we make more and more and more people now we have all these people on the planet and the availability of that cheap energy is starting to diminish. I know there's been some talk about fusion, uh, but that is, if you actually look into it, uh, the, an interesting step along the process of possibly being able to do that was made, but you know nobody's anywhere near that. They are still very, very far from that being a reality. So our ability to have uh, cheap energy is really starting to diminish, and uh, that supply of cheap, cheap energy is what was responsible for allowing all the people that are on the planet to exist. So if uh, what is supporting something suddenly vanishes, if you have a table supporting a nice glass vase, if you take away the table, what's gonna happen to the vase? Well, that's 2023 for you, uh, is that the supports of the system are starting to fall apart. And on top of that, we have, uh, you know, the, uh, the climactic system of the earth is starting to really become destabilized. Farmers are having trouble, uh, you know, uh, managing their crops because it's hot, it's cold, it's dry, it's flooded, you know, things are going crazy. So we have all of these challenges to our food supply and our resource supply system. And what is that going to lead to? Well, we already know, we're already seeing what it's leading to. It's leading to people fighting over the diminishing resources. You know, the fighting that's going on over in Ukraine, do you think that it is just wild coincidence that Ukraine happens to be a great place for generating food, a great place for mining minerals and things like that? No. You know, uh, resources are starting to become more scarce. There are so many people that want those resources, and this is, this is what humans do. Uh, when there's too many people and too few resources, they never work it out. They never work it out. Maybe in like small groups, they're able to kind of try to figure that out. But in large, massive groups, humans just don't know how to human very well. And they fight and they kill. So I think it's kind of unavoidable to see anything else as being the primary characteristic of 2023 as opposed to humans fighting, swirling down the drain uh, for less and less resources as they become more and more scarce. Um, so that's what I'm really prepping and preparing for this year. You know, there are other kind of side things that are going on. You know, COVID's still kind of doing its uh, thing over in China. It's really exploding. There, you know, there could be surprises that come out of there. I don't really know if there's going to be surprises that come out of there. I hope not. I mean, uh, it's uh, germs and all that is, it's kind of an irritating facet of uh, preparedness, the idea of uh, you know, germs and uh, an illness, because, uh, you know, if you don't have your health, you don't really have anything. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, it's something that I'd like to think isn't going to turn into anything big, but it, it also could. So what we are doing is, you know, making sure that all the lessons that we learned from the earlier COVIDs, the COVIDs that killed a very, very small fraction of the population, you know, we take those lessons and we are ready if, you know, there's a new form of COVID or some other kind of a wild card, uh, you know, illness that's going around, you know, learn the lessons that we learned around quarantining and donning and doffing uh, PPE and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, if there were any shortages that we had been sensing over the past couple of years, making sure that those shortages are all shored up. Uh, and that's pretty much where we are, is I see 2023 is going to be a year of conflict and resource scarcity and food, and, you know, food being one of those resources, you know, the types of energy that you use to, you know, warm your house and run your lights and all that. Uh, you know, so start thinking about, you know, 
having a plan for all that. We have plans for all that here. We uh, have a really big pantry. We, we could live off of our pantry for many years. We're developing the ability to grow our own food. We're not, you know, 100% self-sufficient in terms of growing our own food. Uh, we have energy production uh, here at our place where, you know, we're pretty much off grid. Sometimes we'll pop over to the grid if it's like been cloudy for a few days and we, uh, you know, still want to like watch a movie or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, we're working on all that kind of stuff. If there are things that you are dependent upon the grid and society functioning really well uh, to supply to you, figure out workarounds now because it's never going to be easier than it is today. That's it. I hope I'm wrong about this, but. Um, this one's, 2023 I think is a lot easier to predict than 2022 was, uh, unfortunately. And uh, you know, it's not looking good. When you take that table out from under the glass vase, there's, there's very few possibilities of what's gonna happen to that glass vase other than falling on the floor. We'll see. <laughs> but prep for what's possible, prep for what's likely, and what comes will come. And the best you can do is try to make your existence during that time period as comfortable as possible and the silver lining of all of this is it won't last forever maybe 10 years <laughs> and you know people will come out on the other side and um if if as long as we can keep our society intact which is not guaranteed you know i think we could be better for it you know whenever humans go through these kind of bottlenecks we're always better for it on the other side and then give us another couple generations and we'll forget about it and we'll be all like a mess again. But I think we do have the potential of being better on the other side of this uh, if we can survive it. And not everyone will. That's 100% certain. Not everyone will. That's it. Thanks for watching. Happy 2023! Hey YouTube preppers, if you like this video and you're interested in what I was referring to when I said that we'd worked really hard to get ourselves off grid and ready for all this, you may want to watch this video right here where I talk about the process of building our homestead, getting ourselves off grid, and everything that's required for you to do the same.